Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a very long time, I know, and I say that often on this channel, but it's because I have been very busy. Um, from February until the end of June, I was writing my thesis and doing my health science internship. So I didn't have any time to film a video. So now I'm finally done. I don't know if I pa passed uh, the internship or not yet. Uh, I hope I did. <laughs> but yeah, I have the time to film now and to talk about books and language learning. And this video will be about my mid-year language learning um, update or like reflection. Um, I wanted to do this video in June, but yeah, because of everything, it's now July and I still have some almost six months until the end of the year um, to work on language learning. So yeah, I think I think this video is still in time. <laughs> so I will just talk about what I did so far for um, my languages and also I will show you some of my notebooks and on the end I will show you my Notion page or like my Notion uh, that is dedicated to language learning and because I have some new things uh, to show you but yeah like I said uh, it, it was a very busy first half of the year my focus was primarily on first my family my daughter and then uh, on my internship and thesis so I had just a little bit of time and sometimes even no time in a day uh, to focus on reading and language learning and those two hobbies which are equally important to me it had to combat with each other for time sometimes I would just read a couple of pages in one of the books that I was um, enjoying at the moment or I would focus on language learning and um, the two languages that I had my focus on were, were Japanese and Spanish. I didn't do any other languages. Maybe one day I focus a little bit on Chinese for fun. I reviewed my old notes and just uh, learned some new uh, words um, because I felt like it. But um, the rest of the focus was primarily on Japanese and Spanish. And I think, honestly, for now, those will be my long-term um, languages that I am, like, really focusing on. Because I want to bring them both to a upper intermediate level, like B2, C1. They are both important to me. Uh, I love Japanese and I've been learning it for years. But it's a very difficult language, especially if you don't have all the time in a day to focus on. And I'm learning on myself, not with a teacher. So it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> And Spanish, I really like Spanish. I uh, like um, uh, watching content in Spanish, like movies and TV shows, but also just YouTube to YouTubers in uh, in Spanish. And I like to read Spanish literature one day. For now, I have been only focusing on a couple of Sp books in Spanish and not like original Spanish uh, literature because uh, it's just too difficult. But I hope one day to be able to do that. So uh, I will start out with Spanish. What did I do? So in February, I think, or in March, I have focused like the entire month was only Spanish. I did just a couple of things for Japanese, but not a lot. And lately I'm doing um, some, yeah, Spanish listening. What I mean by that is I'm <laughs> watching YouTube videos from a native Spanish speaker. That I really enjoy watching. So I will mention her channel. It's Moonlight Books. And it's a channel about books. About reading. About uh, literature. And mostly um, uh, gothic horror. Or just horror books. But also other literary works. And I really like her the vibe of her channel. And the way she talks about books. So Moonlight Books. If you're also learning Spanish. And you're into reading. I would really recommend that channel. So I've been watching that almost daily. Uh, every time she has a new video, I will, <laughs> I will watch it. And every time I don't know a Spanish word, I will look it up. If it's like really important. But most of the time I just enjoy the content and try to get a lot of Spanish listening done for the day. And that's something that I want to continue doing uh, daily. Sometimes I will do a little bit more. Like reading in Spanish or using an app. And lately I've been using Link again. It's an app that I'm continuously coming back to so I will use it a while then I will stop it and the, uh, the, I think the reason why I every time uh, cancel my subscription is because it's it's quite expensive but it's a really good app for listening and reading skills 
so every time I come back to it when I'm ready to read some more in the language and it has a lot of languages but for Spanish it's very effective I think so that's one thing I've been doing and um, in the beginning of the year of course I had this goal to read three Spanish books and also three Japanese books or books in Japanese uh, and I started out with a Stephen King book in, in Spanish, uh, which was um, Cemetario de Animals. But it was very difficult. I, I couldn't just enjoy the story because it was just too many words that I didn't know. Grammar uh, structures that I have never seen before. And of course, all the conjugation of the verbs. It was so difficult. I just couldn't enjoy the reading process so i stopped that one for uh, for now and then i started learning uh, learning i started reading uh the first book of harry potter which is harry potter e la piedra philosophal so like uh, the philosopher's stone and it, it was a little bit better so i did i think read maybe 15 to 30 pages uh in a book and um yeah it, it was good but it was also still very challenging and I have to say, I at first I thought, well, I will just read Harry Potter in Spanish and in Japanese. Well, in Japanese, it's even more difficult. Harry Potter is not your typical, of course, children's book. It's more aimed, it's more aimed at uh, um, like older children and young adults. So it has some like abstract ideas and complex vocabulary. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite challenging to read that in a foreign language. Um, so for now I'm only reading it in Spanish and in Japanese I also stopped for a while. But yeah, I'm still reading that book. But then I discovered another book that is more available for me at this current level uh, in both languages. And it's uh, The Little Prince. So Le Petit Fr uh, Prince in French and El Principito in Spanish. This book is more at my current level. It's aimed, uh, it aimed at younger children, I think. It's such a beautiful story. I have never read the story before and I still haven't finished it, so I don't know how it will end. So it's uh, it's new for me, which makes it more interesting, but it's also more understandable. So um, yeah, I I like reading this one. And I have the physical copy, which I will uh, sometimes read. Uh, but most of the times I'm reading this book on my Kindle or uh, on Link. So Link has, I think, the entire book uh, on the app. And it's very easy to look up words and then to review them. So uh, I read it on Link and sometimes I read it on my Kindle and sometimes I will just uh, take the physical copy. So I, I have multiple ways of reading this book, which makes it very easy. Um, and I also have bought it uh, in Japanese. So uh, in Japanese, it's Hoshi no Oji Sama. Uh, it's uh, like the Star Prince. They translate a little bit different, um, but yeah, it's also quite short. There are multiple kanjis that I still don't know, but it's less kanji and difficult vocabulary than in the Harry Potter. So I think this is more for my level, for my current Japanese level. Uh, so yeah, both books I am currently reading and uh, for now I'm reading more in Spanish because it's just, it, it takes less effort than it is in Japanese. But I try to read a couple of pages weekly in Japanese as well. That's all I have been doing for now. Watching YouTube videos, reading uh, El Principito and uh, Harry Potter and also just using Link. And I started using Close Master as well, which is also an app to learn vocabulary and sentences. So a little bit of grammar structure as well. Um, I did some Duolingo, but not a lot. I learned more from other apps or from reading. Then Japanese. <laughs> so it's sometimes difficult to admit, but I'm more progressing or more easily progressing in Spanish than I am in Japanese. I've been learning Japanese now for at least three years, seriously, and therefore, and before that, I've been learning it on and off. Um, but it's a very difficult language for me uh, because it's, I have never learned a language similar to Japanese and Spanish is more similar to the languages that I know. So it takes a lot of time. I'm still learning kanji. Uh, I do not do a lot of speaking for all of my languages. Uh, the only languages that I am uh, comfortable speaking in are Dutch, English and um, Russian. 
uh, which are languages that I've really learned as a child for a longer time. But Spanish and Japanese, I'm really focusing on reading and listening because I want to be able to watch the content. So this year I've been focusing on more kanji learning and also just listening to YouTube videos. And I tried out some podcasts. I found a really interesting podcast. However, I'm not really good at doing podcasts, at, at listening podcasts, because I'm losing my uh, concentration very fast. And I just, most of the time I'm in like on the couch trying out a new podcast and then in like 15 minutes I'm asleep. So it's not, it's not the best way for me to uh, learn Japanese. But I do watch some interesting uh, YouTubers and I have been doing some reading. So I, like I said, I started out with Harry Potter, the first book as well. And uh, I think I read 10 pages and then it, I just realized it was very difficult. So I, I, do, I would like to finish it this year, but first I will read uh, The Little Prince in Japanese. I, I think it would be less difficult for me now. Uh, and still it's, it is challenging to finish that book as well. And if I finish it, it will be like the first book that I finished from cover to cover. I will find out if this book is also in Japanese on link. That would make it even more easier uh, for me to read it. But yeah, I, I would still like to read at least two books in Japanese before the end of the year. But I have uh, spent quite some money uh, on Japanese books this year. So I bought The Little Prince in Japanese um, and I'm currently reading it, so that's good. I have also bought um, Totori, <laughs> Tonari no Totoro and I thought this was like the story, um, which is also a children's story and I thought that, that, that would be easy for me to read as well. However, it's not the story, it's like um, this um, background reference book about the movie and the book, or like about the anime, uh, not the book. Um, so it's it's also says here, it's a textbook. I didn't know it, I bought it and um, yeah, it's more like for advanced uh, level of Japanese so I have not read it yet <laughs> then I have bought this one Mirai no Mirai I have never watched the anime I don't know what the story is about but it was also a book that I thought was a little bit easier for me to read and it is um, so yeah I think after uh, The Little Prince I will continue reading this one I have only read like two pages in here uh, for now so this will be probably my next book for Japanese. Then I had found uh, this two, which is uh, Fushigi, um, let me see. Fushigi Dagashiya Zeni Tendo. So it's a very difficult title and every time I for, forget it, um, but it's like about this uh, Japanese traditional candy shop and this woman that tells the story uh, that works in there. Um, I don't know what the stories are about, but I think it's a little bit like those medical um, story kind of stories um, with a, a message. <laughs> uh, so I like the idea of reading this these books, but, but they are aimed at more, I think, intermediate, upper intermediate uh, Japanese uh, learners. So maybe towards the end of the year, I will start out in this one. Um, but yeah. And it's, it's not too difficult, I think. It's it's still, I think, maybe even easier than Harry Potter. But yeah, I have not uh, started out reading it. Um, but I just really like the covers and the premise of the story. <laughs> and then the last one is from uh, Yuka Sensei, who is a YouTuber um, from the channel uh, Nihongo no Mori. And I really like watching Nihongo no Mori because it, uh, the, the channel explains a lot of uh, Japanese grammar and vocabulary and kanji. It's all in Japanese and it's uh, mostly aimed at intermediate, upper intermediate and advanced learners. So from N3 towards N1. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's nice to listen to um, and I have learned a lot of th new things from the channel. So I thought I would buy her book, I hope to read more in this book also this year. But I have also, of course, two textbooks for kanji learning for now that I'm using. And I started out last year with uh, James Hasek Remembering the Kanji, which is a very good book for kanji learning, I think. Um, it, it, the, the idea, the philosophy behind this book is, uh, I think, very effective. 
However, there were some things missing for me. And then uh, one person in the comments um, mentioned another book, which is similar but different. <laughs> and um, of course, I had to check it out because I like buying books and that I do not fit on my shelves anymore and just um, trying out new books. <laughs> so that's what I did. I bought the Kodansha Kanji Learners course, which focuses on mastering 2300 characters 2300 characters it's a lot it's more than in this one this one focuses on 2010 characters so this one has a little bit more one of the reasons why i prefer this book for now a little bit more and i i do wish to finish Hasek's book as well but uh for now i'm focusing on this one it's because it's a book and a word book in one for me and it's i don't i don't think it's supposed to be that way but you have all of this space um, with every kanji and that's how I'm using it um, to write down the kanji. So both books are not focusing on writing the kanji multiple times and like this muscle memorization, um, but I, I like doing it. So I will at least write a couple of times uh, how much I, space I have left um, just to remember how to write it. Uh, then I, of course, also read the stories. And uh, another big difference between these two books is that um, this book also gives some vocabulary and all of the readings of the kanji, all the possible readings. This book only focuses on the kanji, how to write it, the story behind it, like the story to remember it. And um, yeah, that's it, the meaning of the kanji. And not on the readings or vocabulary. And it's uh, it's especially designed this way because there, there's I think this philosophy behind it that you first have to learn how to write the kanji and to memorize like the general meaning of the kanji and then there is a second book that focuses on the readings. But I do like to have everything in one book, uh, so that's why I prefer this book for now a little bit more. But both books are good, so it's just what you want to focus on. So yeah, that was everything for now. Um, that I can show you like this and tell you like this. And I want to be completely honest, this half year uh, from February, in January I did do some things for language learning because I had a little bit more time, but from February until the end of June, I I didn't have much time. So um, I focused on at least doing something, at least daily, <laughs> but it wasn't a lot. So I feel like I didn't progress much, not as much as I wanted to. But um, yeah, I, I did learn some basic things in Spanish and I also discovered that I have a lot of uh, Spanish literature that I would love to read in the original language like Gabriela, um, Gabriela, Gabriel uh, Garcia Marquez. But also I discovered this amazing horror writer that I enjoyed reading in English who is um, Mariana Enriquez and I read so far only one book. But I would like to read her other books in Spanish. So it's something to look forward to. And um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm learning Spanish. Because there's a lot of literature that I want to read. But also I like the sound of the language. So um, yeah, the, next, the rest of the year I will focus on Spanish and Japanese. So I want this video to be realistic. To show you like, no, it's not that I have progressed a lot. And that I can speak all of these languages. It's, it takes a lot of time. And it takes a lot of effort. And it's just a very slow progress. But yeah, let's see my notebooks and what I did with the crunchies. So we'll change the camera view. Okay, and now the second part, I will show you my notebooks. Um, two, one for Spanish and one for Japanese. And also my language learning journal, what I updated in there. So in my language learning journal, I do not do a lot of tracking. So I did some of it every month but most of it i was tracking it in my hobonichi um by making this small habit trackers um and but then i stopped doing it and i switched to my notion which i will show you later uh so all of my language learning tracking i actually do in notion and when i have the time i will fill it in from notion into here so uh, it's like a little bit of double work, but I like to see it this way as well. So from February or yeah, January, you can look at January too, but January was uh, kind of a slow bond. I did a lot of Duolingo, 
and I started doing Anki. But then in February, I did a lot of Anki for Japanese. Uh, I used a couple of decks that I liked and most of my focus was Japanese. And I also started with Marimori, which is a website that I like, but it's still like uh, in development. So um, yeah, they're still adding a lot of stuff, but I uh, invested in this website or like <laughs> took an uh, account and I, I really enjoy it. But uh, lately I didn't have the time to spend much time with it. But in, in February I was uh, doing Anki and Marimori and sometimes Wani Kani. Um, then in March, I also switched to Kanshudo, which is also a very interesting website. It's also for free. You have a subscription, but you can also do a lot of things, a lot of learning for free. Um, I did some Chinese language review, so all of my notes from a year ago or two years ago even. Um, but it was only like one or two days. Then I also did some Marimori and Kanji Garden. I did a lot for Kanji Garden because I also have a goal to unlock multiple uh, kanjis like 500 and then 1000 kanjis in uh, kanji garden so i uh, in march and april i was really using this app a lot and in may um i started doing some spanish i really get back into spanish and what i did was just uh, watching youtube videos about spanish grammar and vocabulary and doing a lot of listening uh, and sometimes i did some kanji learning a true notion um and I did that by uh, creating my own kanji data set in Notion. I already made a video about it. I will link it up. Uh, that's how I'm keeping track of the kanjis that I am learning. So that's uh, on the end of May, I also did that. Then in June, I got back to Japanese, but uh, I still did some things for Spanish. Uh, I started using the app Close Master uh, for Spanish, uh, mostly for Spanish, but sometimes I did some Japanese things as well um, because this app contains multiple language options to learn. But yeah, most of it was Notion Japanese data set uh, and Wanikani. I did a couple of Wanikani reviews. Um, and now July, uh, I will show you in my Notion later what I have been doing in July. So my goals for this year for Japanese I didn't do much with my goals uh, so I wanted to finish uh, a half of the remembering the kanji book I switched to another book reach level 15 on Bonnie Kani I definitely haven't achieved that I did some of my reviews but I haven't spent much time with Bonnie Kani uh, unlock thousand kanjis in kanji garden haven't uh, achieved that yet but i have worked on this goal so i'm uh, right now i think i have unlocked 200 so i still have a long way to go uh study all grammar from jopt and 5 and and 4 uh, with the bumpo app i haven't touched the app so yeah uh, not going well with that goal but i did some grammar uh lessons uh, through youtube then read three Japanese books. Uh, well, I'm working on that one right now. I'm, I'm reading The Little Prince and I had started reading Harry Potter, but it's it's going very slowly. And achieve one year of Duolingo streak. Well, that one I'm not going to achieve this year because I already lost my streak uh, and I don't think I will do much Duolingo uh, for Japanese. Then some actions. Well, that's all fine. And here I wrote down when I started reading Harry Potter on my Kindle. Then for Korean, I didn't do anything. So those goals, maybe the rest of the year I will have some time for Korean, but for now I didn't do anything. Uh, Spanish. Uh, I wanted to finish the book uh, Cementerio de Animales by Stephen King. I have started it, but it was very difficult. So again, I switched to Harry Potter and also uh, to uh, My Little Prince of uh, The Little Prince. Um, but maybe towards the end of the year, I would start Cemetery de Animales again. Reach Unit 30 in Duolingo. I haven't done much after February for Duolingo and January, so no. <laughs> and finish complete Spanish all in one book. Again, a book um, that I haven't used this year. Uh, it's a grammar book um, and I don't think I'm going to use it that much. Right now I'm mostly doing uh, YouTube and apps. But uh, who knows, uh, at least I, I would like to finish or come further in the book uh, of Stephen King this year. That would be nice. 
And some general goals reflect monthly on my Japanese learning progress. I didn't really do that, but I keep track of what I'm doing in Notion and also I did some in my Hobonichi. I make a mid-year reflection video. Well, I'm doing that right now, so that's uh, going okay, but not in June, in July. It's fine. Use Hobonichi weeks as daily logs of learning activities and summary the activities in the notebook, in this notebook. Well, that last one I didn't do, but I um, am using Notion. Um, for English, I ha also had a goal, improve my writing skills by blogging, writing essays and learn new literary vocabulary. Well, I have done a lot of reading or well, maybe not a lot, but I did do uh, most of my reading in English and also um, I wrote my, my thesis in English, of course. So I did work on that. Uh, I didn't do a lot of blogging. I just didn't have the time for that. So my mid-year reflection, I wrote it down because I did want to do at least a little bit of reflection and only for Japanese. Um, I did some, I wrote down some Spanish things, but mostly for Japanese. So I have been using 12 days, the Kanji Garden app and Kanji Do six days. Renshu is also a very nice app. I used it for six days and on key for 23 days. Um, it's not a lot, but I use a lot of apps. So it, it adds up, I think. <laughs> Wanikani only four days. So I really want to work on Wanikani more and I want to move on to the next level. Mari Mori, I did it for 19 days. Um, so yeah, I hope to do more with this website and hopefully they will release their app form as well. And uh, then I can use it more. Then textbooks, remembering the kanji and Kodansha's kanji learning course. Um, yeah, so I did use both of them, but mostly now Kodansha's kanji learners course. And I started making my Japanese data set and uh, like a Japanese uh, learning system in Notion. So I'm really proud and happy about that because it helps a lot to remember what I'm learning and kind of review the things that I'm learning. Currently reading. Uh, Harry Potter, the first one, The Philosopher's Stone, uh, it's difficult. Uh, I also started another book in uh, in my Kindle, which was Zunome Ningyo, uh, Zunome Do. Uh, it was very interesting, the first pages, but it was also very difficult. It's about this, uh, it starts out in this, um, like, publishers, book, book publisher's office, and there's a lot of uh, professional terms. Uh, and literary terms that I don't know. So it was very difficult to read, but it was interesting. Um, also, I started with A Hole in the Wall. It was challenging. It was on Satori Reader. I will write that also here. Satori Reader, which is an app for reading. I really like that app um, and I'm still reading it. It's a very big story, but um, yeah, I liked it. And it's, it's challenging, but it's not too difficult. And then also Hoshino Oji um, Sama. Hoshino Oji Sama, so the little prince just started. It's challenging, but it's interesting and not too difficult. So that's just my Japanese review for now. Then I made this progress page and I will fill that out at the end of the year. Uh, it's uh, for all the languages that I'm currently interested or focusing on. Um, and I just wrote down most of the apps that I'm using, like for Spanish, I have Duolingo and the complete Spanish hour one book, which is a book and then the link app. And I wrote down um, where I'm currently in that resource. So in Duolingo, I was in unit seven at the beginning of the year, a complete Spanish book. I didn't do anything. So it's just the beginning of the book. And then in link, I had uh, 332 words that I know. So I know that this one increased almost 2000. So I did a lot of link um, learning. <laughs> and with for Japanese, I had my Wanikani level at seven, which is still seven. Um, but yeah, hopefully at the end of the year, I will improve that. Kanji Garden, I had, I had 169 unlocked. I think right now it's a little bit more. For Duolingo, I was at unit 12 and I haven't improved that much. Bumpo, uh, JOPT and 5, 7 out of 10. Uh, so hopefully I will uh, end with JOPT and 4 this year. Then remembering the kanji, I was on lesson 4 and I think I'm still around lesson 4 or 5. Uh, so the reader, I had um, 850 uh, words queued and 35 active and all, no zero learn. But I don't 
but I don't do a lot of uh, reviews in my Subtle Reader app, so I'm mostly using it for reading. Um, so I don't know if this is a good tracking option, but it's fine for now. And in Link, I had I had 776 words that I know, and I think that one improved as well. And Conchido, I started using it in June. Um, I added it in June, and I did that also for German, Korean, and Chinese, but I. I don't know how far I will come with these languages. So here I wrote down all of the content uh, for Japanese that I'm watching, the channels, and also what I want to check out. And I did the same for Spanish. Um, and one of the channels that I already mentioned in this video, but that I really like is Moonlight Books uh, for just listening practice. Uh, but I also have uh, Martin Acqui Acquires uh, an idioma and Spanish land school, which is also really good for grammar. I didn't put any Korean channels down for now. And here are more resources that I'm using. Um, and I have my Japanese bucket list, which is like a little more flexible than, than my goals. Um, and I have a bucket list for Spanish as well. And I made some goals for the next month from July until December, which I will reflect on the end of the year on. Uh, I want to finish reading My Little Pr oh, my little Prince, I still keep saying that, The Little Prince in uh, Japanese. So these are all Japanese goals. I will continue working on Kodansha Kanji Learners course. I want to grow my uh, Discover Kanji data set in, in Notion. Uh, so right now I have 191 kanjis and 35 mustard kanji. So kanji that I'm uh, feel comfortable to say that I know them. So I want to improve that. I want to watch Japanese news in the morning for 30 days. Uh, so, and then I can fill this one this one out. Um, use Wani Kani weekly. I really have to work on that one. Uh, listen to all podcast episodes from uh, a podcast that I really enjoy. And there are 177 in total, so I have to work on it. And maybe uh, she will release more podcasts. So this is the current number that I can see. Um, I want to write down and translate 10 weekly Hobonichi texts. Um, so these are the texts that... So most of the time it's very small texts and I want to write them down and, and kind of translate and pick out the kanji in the words that I don't know. I wanted to do that every week, but I didn't. So now I want to do at least 10 for this year. Then I want to use Mari Mori again weekly, but not uh, currently I'm not doing that. Finish all beginner lessons in kanji though. I'm almost done, done with this one, so that's nice. Improve my kanji mastery score in kanji though, and improve my Japanese mastery score. Well, there are the scores in kanji though that I uh, want to improve. And also we read weekly one article on NHK Japanese Easy News. So that one uh, I kind of have been doing, so that's nice. Um, for Spanish, I had a couple of goals as well. Watch Spanish YouTube videos from Native, example Moonlight Books channel. Uh, well, I'm doing that almost daily. Uh, finish reading Harry Potter e la Piedra Filosofal. Um, yeah, I think that should be manageable uh, at the end of the year. Uh, close master, I want to learn 500 most common words and also master 5% of fluency fast track. So it's uh, all related to the close master app. And also listen to all lessons on language transfer app, which is also a really good app. They don't have Japanese, but they do have a lot of um, uh, Roman languages. So um, uh, Spanish, French, uh, German. Uh, so it's it, it's a very good like audio lessons app. So, so far, that's it for my uh, language learning notebook. So now the Spanish notebook. Um, let me see notes from this year when it started. So this is still 2022. This is all 2022 and here starts 2023. So I did a lot of uh, review of the tenses in Spanish, uh, which I find very difficult. I like languages with 
less uh, conjugation of tenses of, of verbs, or less tenses and less conjugation of verbs, but Spanish has a, a lot of that. So I really need to read a lot about it and kind of write down the sentences. So I did that. Then I did some vocab uh, learning with ChatGPT. I, I don't really use a lot of ChatGPT for language learning. I tried it out in the beginning, but it, it's not really my thing for now. Um, I asked ChatGPT to write me a Spanish text at a certain level and or like a review of a book that I like and then I try to learn vocabulary with it. That's all I did. Uh, then I have here some Spanish resources that I was using that I'm still using and um, wrote down some words that I have read somewhere. Um, I did here the same for some of the words I also write down an example sentence. Um, yeah, that's what I did and with Close Master. I like their, the sentences that they provide with the vocabulary that you learn. So often I will write down some of the sentences uh, in my notebook as well. Uh, so this is all from Close Master. Then I had some uh, Hola Spanish. Uh, it's a YouTube channel that I used to learn some of the uh, conjugations and grammar. So I made some notes on that. Uh, then some vocabulary from Harry Potter e la Piedra Filosofal, uh, which I just wrote down when I, when I was reading and then I look up some of the words. Um, then multiple ways how to say sorry in Spanish. Uh, it's uh, from the Close Master blog. So the app has also a blog which explains a lot of grammar or vocabulary uh, example phrases. So I uh, uh, wrote some of it down. Um, Transition words. It's also from the Close Master um, blog. Uh, it's words like already and always, um, which are very important in a, a conversation. We use it alone or at last, finally, at first. So when we're speaking, we lose all, uh, we use a lot of these filler words. So I wanted uh, to know them in Spanish as well. So I did again some of the tenses. Um, and conjugation. Um, I really find that difficult. So yeah, I wrote everything down, but uh, it's not that I, uh, I'm more familiar with it, but it's not that I know all of this um, perfectly, but it's, it's something I started doing it at least. <laughs> Then uh, daily expressions from Spanish Land School YouTube channel. Um, really good channel if you're learning Spanish, check it out. Um, yeah, I, I just wrote the things down. Close master again, some of the sentences from vocabulary. Um, and I also wrote down uh, one page from El Principito. Um, so the first page that I was reading. I don't know what I wanted to do with this, but I just, I wanted to write something in Spanish. So I started to copy in the page. So I think that's it for my Spanish notebook for now. It's uh, not a lot. These are just uh, random languages that I have in here. So that was all for Spanish. Then my Japanese notebook. So let me go to the things that I want this year and this is still all 2022 this is 2022 I haven't made a lot of notes this year this is still 2022 and here starts 2023 so here uh, this is like this um, story game that I have on my laptop uh, which is uh, uh, Higurashi no Naku uh, it's like a horror story uh, slash game uh, I don't know the exact term, but you're like playing, um, you're reading the story and you're choosing things, uh, how the story will continue on. So there, I, I think there is a, a gaming term for this, but I don't know. Uh, so I wrote down the vocabulary that I didn't know. And I want to return to this game and just um, read more because it's very interesting reading and also playing at the same time. You kind of, it doesn't feel like learning. Uh, I haven't looked up all of the words that I wrote down, but yeah. Uh, then weekly Hobonichi texts. Um, I did one. And that's actually it. That's all I did this year so far. 
for uh, making notes. I didn't make a lot of notes for Japanese right now. Um, oh, it's not entirely true. I did do some uh, kanji. So this is 2022. Um, let me see where 2023 starts. Oh no, it's not in here. Uh, I have a separate notebook that I used. Let me grab that one. So this was my kanji notebook that I used for remembering the kanji, or TK, remembering the kanji. So first I started out doing it here, but uh, because this is like my general notes, Japanese notes notebook, I wanted to have a separate notebook for the, um, the remembering the kanji. And um, this is where 2023 starts. So I did a lot of uh, copying of, yeah, the kanji that I already have learned, so I just wrote them down to make this notebook complete. But I already know these kanjis. But yeah, that's what I did. I wrote down the lesson that I was at, um, the kanji in red, then the meaning of the kanji. That's all that I have been doing um, for all of the kanjis. And this is lesson four. And uh, until, yeah, until lesson four. So because all of this I have already uh, pra practiced in this notebook. And then I started with new material. So conscious that I haven't uh, write down yet. So I wrote them down, the meaning in red uh, and the kanji in red. And, uh, and then the radicals that it exists of. So this one exists of bound up and they. This is the radical for bound up and then they radical is in it. So and the kanji itself means the cameron. I wrote down like a, a small fragment of the story to remember it. And it's uh, a journey of 10 days taken by a group of uh, people bound together for the days of the Decameron. So yeah, it's like a small story to remember it. And then I write down the kanji multiple times, mostly three strokes, uh, three lines. And that's it. I uh, came <laughs> towards lesson five and then I switched to Kodansha's Kanji Learners course. So this is the book that I'm talking about. Um, and for here, I don't have to use a notebook because um, I can write the kanjis, at least one line of the kanjis I can write it uh, in the book itself, which I really like. So I started doing this in March, uh, 29th of March of this year. And of course, these are beginner kanjis that I already know. So I went by very quickly. Um, and wrote them down and just read some of the stories. But I already know this kanji, so it wasn't a problem. Except for a couple that I uh, find it challenging to write them, like this one, uh, the kanji for day of the week, uh, yo. Uh, I, <laughs> it's a very difficult kanji to write, so I wrote it down a couple of times. But uh, yeah, it was good to practice. Also the kanji for water, which is very simple, but I still struggle to write it beautifully. The kanji for gold, I practice this one as well because it, uh, it doesn't look as a picture <laughs> in my opinion but yeah that's that's what I did this is April I, I did this one in April um, and I really like doing this it's very relaxing to write the kanjis and read some of the stories um, but I already know all of this so it wasn't difficult but then we started out with kanjis that were a little bit new to me like this one um, or this one, I did, didn't really know all the words and the meaning. And uh, now you start seeing that I'm making these small uh, marks, and that means that I want to come back to this kanji and review it. So, um, and I think then, then I will write them down in my notebook. Same goes for this one. It's kind of challenging to write, and also uh, the meaning is quite uh, abstract. Uh, it means become, form, or achieve. Um, so I need to remember this one better. This one I did recently uh, in July, the 1st of July. Um, so I'm still I'm still using it, but now we're uh, it's today the 14th of July. So I need to come back to this book and uh, start working on it further. So far I really like uh, doing this. So I think that's all of my notebooks and all that I did for Japanese and uh, for Spanish. So now it's time to move on to the next phase, which is the last phase, Notion. Okay, so this is my Notion dashboard. And here I have my daily language learning. 
So this is what I mean that I have been tracking my language learning. Um, it's uh, for every day and I see it like this. And most of the time I'm using it on my mobile and then it looks a little bit more organized, but here we have this, which I don't see on my mobile, but it's fine. Uh, this is for 4th of uh, 14th of July. These are the things that I can track and I can always add new things if I'm starting a new app or if I'm doing something else. But for now what I'm tracking um, are the following apps for Japanese, Kanji Garden, Mori Mori. It's more a website, but they will release an app form soon, I think. But for now I'm using the website. So then we have Wani Kani which is also a website but they do have an app uh, which is flaming dirtles um, so yeah and most of the time i'm using the app uh Kanshudo, it's a website a really good one um a lot of things are for free so you can check it out and it's uh it's for everyone from beginner intermediate to advanced then we have satori reader which is a reading app for japanese uh really interesting and then the kanji app this one is entirely free so check it out it's kanji with explanation mark and it's entirely for free and then you can practice your kanji drawing and also just the readings and vocabulary and then anki i've sometimes used it for japanese this year i have used it mostly in January and February but yeah sometimes I come back to Anki and then I stop using it uh, it's not the best app in, in the design but it's really effective so <laughs> it's something Duolingo most of the time I'm not using it but if I feel like it I have the option to uh, mark it here Close Master uh, I use this app mostly for Spanish but there is also Japanese on this app so it's an option Renshu, again, a very nice app. Um, it has a lot of vocabulary, kanji, grammar, uh, games to play. And you can still do a lot for free. There's a subscription, but uh, a lot of the content is for free. So then we have the book Kanji Learners Course. Um, I have the option for Japanese YouTube learning. And this I use more often because I can watch YouTube videos just for fun from natives about subjects that I like, like books or just traveling. And it's also, I feel like that's also learning because I'm improving my listening skills, but it can also mean that I'm really watching a video on grammar or vocabulary and making notes. So it can mean both things. Podcasts, Japanese podcasts, there are a couple that I like, but I do, do not do often podcasts. So this one, I just recently added this one. Uh, Japanese news, sometimes I watch it in the morning, so then I can... Um, mark this one as done and japanese reading so it means uh kindle reading but it can also mean that i have read an article discover kanji uh, this means that i have uh, added new kanji or learned the kanjis that i have in my data set in notion so this is my like my own kanji system uh remembering the kanji which is the book by Hasek. um i will i want to come and come back to it uh, one day so i still have it in here uh, and then we go into Spanish apps and uh, resources. So Spanish reading, Duolingo, I did it for a while, but again, um, I'm not a huge fan of Duolingo. Spanish YouTube learning means the same. I'm watching native content or I'm really focusing on a lesson in, on YouTube. So it can mean two things. And most of the time I'm watching uh, videos about books or about subjects that I like in Spanish. Close Master, very interesting app. You can check it out. It is also for free. They have a subscription. I think almost all apps uh, have a sub paid subscription nowadays, but you can do a lot for free as well. And I also started a uh, Bilingua, Bilingua app, which is uh, also an app for Spanish, but they do have other languages as well. And they fo uh, focus mostly on reading and listening. So you read uh, and listen to short fragments of a story or a book. They have all kinds of books and news articles. And I think they update the news articles every time. So there's also, again, a paid subscription, but you can also read like three stories, I think, for free daily, something like that. So you can check it out if you're into reading as well in the language. And then language transfer. Uh, they only have Spanish, no, no Japanese, and a couple of other languages, but it's just audio lessons in in the spanish language so you start out from beginning and you work towards i think intermediate is the end goal very interesting uh concept and sometimes when i have the time to listen i will prefer this one for spanish over podcasts but yeah that's <laughs> it's something that you can check out and it's entirely for free so it's a good one then there is a link and it's an app that i really like uh, it's also focused on reading and listening 
And there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of languages in there. So I can use it for Japanese and also for uh, Spanish. And uh, lately I've been using it for Spanish. The only downside is uh, the free version is very limited. Uh, so I have the paid version, but it works really well to get your readings done. So that's uh, all the apps that I'm currently using. Um, and if I go to the data set itself, you can see the calendar form uh, of uh, my data set. And let me see, yeah, we're in July. So that's nice. And then you can see for the whole month what I did. So this week I have done a lot of reading. It just like in English and uh, I wanted to catch up on my reading goals. So I didn't have a lot of time to do language learning, but what I did was mostly for Spanish. So all the days I just watch a lot of native content in Spanish and that's, that's all for now. So I hope to do it more for language learning and if, uh, especially more for Japanese. So for now it has been only YouTube. But last week I did some kanji on the kanji app, uh, some kanji drawing. On Tuesday I did all kinds of things for Spanish and also watched Japanese news. And yeah, that's how I track it. And then I can see that week, what did I do? On Sunday I didn't do anything, as you can see. So yeah, it, it differs. And I think this is a nice way to see which days I have been productive in language learning and which days I haven't. The week before that, I was still finishing up my thesis, but I like uh, when I'm stressed and I have to do something, I like to procrastinate by doing something productive, but not the thing that I have to do. So ex instead of um, focusing on my thesis, I did a lot of Japanese news and Kanshudo, uh, I did some things for, uh, I, did, I learned um, Spanish and Japanese with Close Master, and the whole week has been like that. I tried to relax myself with language learning. And then um, that week I did the most for language learning, as you can see. So for now, this is it. Uh, everything that I had to reflect on uh, for the past six months, uh, almost seven months. I will make more updates on my language learning um, in the next months, and I hope. You will, if you're still watching this video, which is, I think, getting quite long, thank you. And I hope you will continue watching my channel. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.